Hello everybody, your favourite Uncle Frog here again, and I've finally escaped from the catacombs underneath the house. And I'm, I'm sitting in the kitchen, which is great because uh, this is where you find the tea. Which is rather nice. And also, I found cake. So I'm, I'm a happy boy. Um, why am I up here and not down in the workshop like I'm, where I'm no normally found? This is because I am working on um, my second version of this. Now, if you're a, a reenactor uh, and you're watching this and you're thinking, why does an Anglo-Saxon reenactor have a gorget or gorget? 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 Mm. Um, because, you know, the, there's no evidence of them. They're, they're, they're anachronistic for Anglo-Saxon reenactment. And this is because I fight in the SEA and they have a very strict set of armour rules um, and you have to wear neck protection of some description. Um, and it's, it's defined as protect, protecting the front of the, uh, the throat, the larynx, and I think, is it? No, oh, oh dear, I'm gonna get into trouble here, but I think it's the sixth vertebrae. Is that correct? If I'm not somebody from the SA, please correct me at that point. But I, I, I did check up where it is on the back of my neck. And at a recent event, SA event, um, first time round, but somebody, somebody looked at this one and said, oh, I'm not sure if that's really far enough down. And I haven't really been particularly happy with this um, because it's a Mark I, it's not particularly neat, I can do better. Um, and so I thought, well, what I can do is, is build a, a second one of these, um, learning from my mistakes from the first one, um, and also make this bit at the back, down the neck, a little bit deeper, so there's, there's no um, discussion over whether it does actually cover that vertebrae or not. So. Um, yes, later on, definitely, absolutely, um, definitely in. Uh, some of you may have seen in a previous video that I, I had a, um, a sort of full-blown cheese riot uh, in my fridge, which is just over there. Um, but it all got settled. Um, nice group of businessmen, the, the fridge magnets, uh, they, they stepped in and they, they settled the whole problem. And, and, and things, you know, I'm, I'm getting on quite well with, with, with the cheese now. That, that was the gouda. Um, and yeah, I mean, he's, he's a very keen war gamer and he asked me if I'd take part in, um, in, in a tabletop battle uh, later on today. It's apparently from the, from the Stilton Wars, it's one of the, the seminal battles there. Um, and the, I think it was the, the 48th Gouda uh, fought a defensive battle um, against the, um, the feral um, Yak Cheese uh, tribes. Um, and relieved, I think, on the on the fourth or fifth day um, by the Light Cheshire Dragoons. Uh, sounds fascinating, so I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to that. Um, yes, anyway, um, back to this. So, um, I could make a, uh, a metal uh, gorget. Gorget, gorget, here we go again. I'm not sure. I'm going to say gorget because it sounds, it sounds French and it sounds nice. Um, could make a metal one, but that's seriously anachronistic. Uh, so I thought, well, I'll go for leather because then it, <laughs> it, it's wrong from the point of view of a historical reenactor, but it looked less out of place. So this is my original one, and this was the very first time I, I tried playing with, um, with boiled leather. And it, it didn't work particularly well. It, it came out reasonably solid, but not fantastically. So. <clears throat> Um, I went back, I, I have, I made up some, I've got some patterns, um, which I, which I made up, cut the leather out, um, boiled it just in pure beeswax, and now I've got some, some very solid chunks here, which I'm, I'm really pleased with, they've came, they've come out really nicely. Um, then I've, I've gone round the edge, um, with the straight awl and punched a whole load of holes through um, because I'm going to add a, um, a linen liner on the inside. Now that might get a little kind of rancid over time with my sweat, but uh, heh, 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 heh. I had a gambeson that never got washed um, and, and I had many interesting, fascinating conversations with it over the years. So, um, yeah, 
The other thing that I made a mistake with um, was here with, with, with this. Um, this um, buckle here is, is just, I'm gonna hold that a bit closer. It's way too small and this is way too short. So um, I found a larger buckle uh, here. And again, this, this one is actually a genuine find. So it's a, it's a historically accurate buckle on a historically inaccurate thing. Um, so I've, I've put that on obviously sewn it through and I've got a longer strap Ta -da! Um, and um, another one of these uh, which is the connector for that side. All of that gets sewn on first of all and then these these patterns are slightly smaller um, than the, um, the patterns I used for this. And the reason um, is because this is is for my um, army blanket and so I've got a, um, some old army blanket and I'll cut out um, three or four layers of that and sandwich that like I did here underneath the, um, the linen um, and this time around you won't have this nasty kind of bit showing which was really not particularly neat and I didn't like it that one just tuck underneath because the, um, ooh, how do I describe that? So on the inside here, you can see the, um, the holes. Can I, yeah, that's better, you can see the holes there. And this means that I will make a larger linen cover and fold it over, um, but the, um, the, the army blanket will sit inside these holes. It will be no larger than the um, the size of this item inside the holes, so it doesn't go to the edge. Um, and then that will strap on front and back, and it'd be a lot easier to kind of do up. It'd be a longer strap, and and yeah, it should look neater and nicer. And that's the idea. But um, I mean, I could have tried to just. You know, rework this one, but at the end of the day, I thought, well, there's there's so much I'm not happy with. It just makes more sense to build a new one, um, and this can be used as lonely gear for somebody. Maybe we'll see if they're okay with my icky sweat on the inside of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's that's basically what I'm doing. It'll end up looking almost exactly the same as this, so I won't bother to do a follow-on video. I just thought. Might be interesting for you to uh, to uh, to see it. Yeah. Now um, earlier on, I I kind of said, oh yes, you know, sort of my my um, first set of uh, bald leather didn't work out particularly well. <laughs> um, but this one, sort of <laughs> not moving. Um, that did work out quite well. So I suppose it's worth mentioning how I did this. I, I'll put probably up here, I think, because it looks like there's a bit of space. Um, I'll put my little uh, sort of beeswax thing, how I do it, up there as a photograph. It's very, very simple. I have just a, um, a, um, uh, a couple of hot plates, um, a big, um, it's actually an old, old baking tin filled with water. Um, and then on top of that, I have a smaller baking tin that's filled with the beeswax. Um, switch it on, heat it up and um, drop this in. Now. When I, when I first read up on the internet how to do this, it said, uh, you know, you shouldn't leave it in for too long because it will shrink, you know, sort of one minute, two minutes, heat it up beforehand in an oven. Um, I tried all of this and it just didn't work. And so I took a, um, a piece of this leather that I had and I did an experiment on it. I, actually, I cut up four or five pieces of leather of this thickness and it's, and it's you know, stonkingly thick leather. Um, it's probably about five, six mil actually. Um, and I cut up multiple pieces, same size from the same part of the hide and um, threw them into the beeswax and left them in there um, for quite a long period of time. And the interesting thing is I found that none of them um, significantly shrank. You know, they, they might have shrank by like half a millimetre or so, but not significantly. And so my rule of thumb with, with this, which is it's, um, as I said, very thick leather. It's, um, 
um, what do you call it? Um, it's <laughs> veggie tan. That's the word I'm looking for. Veggie tan, not chrome tan, but veggie tan. Um, so it's a veggie tan leather and, and a thick veggie tan leather. And my rule of thumb is I throw it in there and it bubbles. Um, you, know, you can see the bubbles coming out of it. And I just wait until it's basically stopped bubbling and then take it out. Um, and um, I put a, a towel around my neck and then form this around my neck and just, you know, stood around until it cooled down. And when it cooled down enough to be, to hold its shape on its own, but it wasn't actually hard, then I um, put some, some heavy items around it so it wouldn't kind of gradually open back up again and left it to cool. In the end, actually, it worked out really, really simple. Um, but it required a, a degree of experimentation. So um, maybe if I'm using thinner le leather, it will leather, leather. That's not good. Maybe if I'm using um, thinner leather, it will it will shrink more. I don't know. I really haven't done a lot of this. Uh, but yeah, there we go. So I really enjoyed this video. Um, I'm upstairs. I can see out the window. Uh, which, over there, you can't see out there, but, but it's nice. Yeah. Um, I've got a cup of tea and a nice mug. One that I don't take down into the workshop. I've got my cake here, which I've been eating between takes. And it's, and it's been really, really good. Um, if you've enjoyed watching this video, then you can do the old kind of standard things of comment and rating and subscribing and liking. And if you want to see all the mistakes I've made and the reason why I've eaten quite a chunk of cake, uh, then you could um, sign up for the Patreon. And I think on the second second level of Patreon, you get to see my blooper reel. <laughs> that may not be a good advertisement for Patreon. I have no idea. But you could watch that if you like. But of course, then you have to do the Patreon thing. Yeah. Anyway. Um... I imagine next time round I'll be back in the cellar again because that's where I normally live. I am a cellar dweller. But I'll see you then. Bye.